Hi, I'm Tamitha Scove with your solar storm forecast for the week of June 11th. The sun has been incredibly busy this week, starting with this gorgeous filament eruption that occurred on June 4th. Now this thing was 40 Earth lengths long by the time it erupted, and it did cause a geomagnetic storm at Earth, but more on that in a minute. First, I want to tell you about the new developments from region 2087, which was actively flaring before it even became visible on the Earth disk. And in the last 48 hours, it's given us three X-class flares and an M-class flare. Here's the X2.2 right here, followed by an M or an X1.5, and that has spawned a solar storm that might be partially Earth-directed. Now returning to that geomagnetic storm from that filament eruption, you can see our stoplight chart shows us that we actually were really well disturbed for over 12 hours. We were quite above storm levels, which was kind of a surprise because when you look at it in coronagraphs, the eruption looks like it's going mostly southeast of us. But if you look closely, there is a bit of a halo around the sun, which does mean that part of it was Earth directed. But despite the fact that we had really strong magnetic fields, it was kind of north-south, north-south, so it meant that the aurora was very sporadic. We got a good show of the United States several times, but it would flash on and off, so if you weren't there at the right time, you didn't see it. And lucky for us, we did have some solar storm chasers out there. We have this gorgeous time lapse sent in from Liam Bonneman in Washington, and also David McComb in Whistler, Canada. Now returning to the current day and our flare meter, you can see we've actually been under the M flare threat level except for the past 48 hours. You can see those three X flares there, those are from region 2087 which is barely rotated onto the east limb. Now solar storms have been launched with these X flares, but they're pretty much not earth directed, they're mostly eastward, yet for this X1.5 you can see that little red line being drawn that shows that there is a halo so it may actually be part Earth directed. Switching to our prediction model ENL, the top panel is density, the bottom panel is velocity. You can see the solar storm associated with that X1.5 uh, coming, it looks like it's going to miss Earth to the east on the 13th, but the coronagraphs tell a different story so it could be anyone's guess. So even if this storm misses us, our backside monitor tells us there may be more coming. Now here's Earth, here's the Sun, and here's our backside monitor, which is what you're looking at. This is stereo. Do you see that cluster, that bright cluster on the limb there? That's region 2087, and it's been firing stuff all on the backside. Now if we look at science grade maps of active regions on the Sun, I'll focus in on region 2087. This was just a few days before it reached the Earth's side of the disk, and all this activity and all this new growth means that it has a lot of strong potential for continued X flares as it transits the Earth disk. Now returning to the disk, there already are a lot of active regions that are transiting Earth view this week, the most notable being region 2080 and 2085, and despite their fast development, I mean, look at them as they grow, they're not even the main players anymore. The main player is region 2087, which is just barely coming onto the Earth disk, and all of the cluster of active regions that are going to be coming on within the next couple of days, those are going to be the ones to watch this week. So looking at your solar storm conditions over the end of this week, you see at high latitudes the possibility is quite high with a peak on June 13th. That's when we expect to get that glancing blow from the solar storm associated with that M1.5 flare. We expect to have active conditions with a 50% chance of a major storm at high latitudes and a 20% chance of a minor storm at mid-latitudes, and then unsettled conditions then as the storm begins to taper off. Now turning to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook, NOAA has actually upped the X-class flare risk to 30% chance over the next three days, and the re main player of course is region 2087. Now because of that, we actually have a radiation storm watch in effect. We have a 30% chance of uh, a particle storm uh, as this region continues to rotate onto the disk, it will continue to increase because we actually have more chance of radiation storms as these regions rotate to the west limb. So this week looks to be very exciting. We've got that solar storm glancing blow on the 13th, as well as X flares that could happen at any time. And along with those X flares means we could have a possible radiation storm in our future. Now all of these disruptions mean you're probably going to have issues with your GPS or GPS based traffic services and you ham radio operators expect blackouts with those X flares and also issues with satellite based communication during the X flares. But outside of that, enjoy your week and keep watching the sun. I'm Tamitha Scope. Thank you for watching.